The purpose of these lessons is to show you the logic behind the most basic Chinese characters, beginning with the simplest pictograms, and later combining these elements to create more complex characters. Today's lesson includes ten characters, eight of which contain the rain radical, referring naturally to weather conditions for the most part. Our first character is the pictogram for rain, with a line above for the sky, the outline of a cloud below, and four raindrops inside. Pronounced third tone. U, U. Fairly straightforward examples would be the way to say, It's raining. Xia yu, xia yu. Literally, it falls rain. If you just notice that it started to rain and that may affect your plans, you might want to add the unstressed particle le to indicate a change in the situation. Xia yu le, xia yu le. A rainy day would be yu tian or xia yu tian, and rainwater would logically translate as yu shui. Once we know rain, we need to learn the character for cloud, an ancient pictogram for a sky, consisting of two horizontal lines, shang, with water vapor rising and collecting underneath. Pronounced second tone, yun, yun. The purple lines are the original character and the phonetic element. And when the weather forecast says do yun, you can expect a mostly cloudy day ahead. Yunnan is a province in the southwest of China famous for the cultivation of tea. The third character in today's lesson is a combination of rain plus a character we saw in lesson 8, xiang, meaning appearance or reciprocal action. This new character is pronounced first tone, shuang, shuang, meaning frost. The tree plus I serves as the phonetic element in this phonosomatic combination. As with rain, frost falls and collects on plants and crops. So the Chinese say, xia shuang le. Where I come from, it would sound odd to say, it frosted preferring instead to say something like, there was a hard frost last night, or look, the ground's covered with frost, or possibly, our lawn is frosted over. Next is another cold weather phenomenon, a character composed of a hand grasping bundles of straw or twigs and brushing away the snow. In other words, rain that can be swept out of the way. It's pronounced third tone, xue, xue. The purple hand is the only part of the broom-like pronunciation clue that remains. Again, as with rain and frost, xia xue means it's snowing. And, as we might expect, a snowman is xue ren, and anything that's as white as snow is xue bai. A four-character expression describing a white, wintry scene is shuang tian xue di. 
you'll notice that Chinese often juxtaposes opposites in their idioms. In this case, heaven and earth. Shuang Tian, Xue Di. Our next character has the same arcobone pictogram of a cloud, but this time the cloud is releasing hailstones instead of raindrops. This new character is pronounced second tone, bao, bao. As you can see, the hailstones were later replaced with a familiar character from lesson 14 to serve as the phonetic, bao, conveying the idea of little bundles, little bundles of ice, that is. To say it's hailing is the same as with the other weather terms we just learned. Xia Bing Bao. Remember to add Bing to clarify the meaning of Bao, which otherwise might confuse a listener, since Chinese has so many homonyms. The sixth character of today's lesson is the pictogram for lightning and electricity. pronounced fourth tone, Tian, Tian. The original lightning bolt is at the bottom, under the rain cloud. Some examples of this character are dry cell batteries, literally pools of electricity, Dian Chi, Dian Chi. And if your battery dies, the expression is Dian Chi Mei Dian Lo. The particle Le indicating a change in the situation. Perhaps that you can't make that call now until you've recharged your phone. The short two-character expression for electronic and play is Dian Wan, and Da Dian Wan means to play video games on your computer or cell phone. Anything electronic, from organ to email, is based on the characters for electron, Dian Zi, and we'll use this character. Electrical household appliances are called Jia Dian for short. Combining Shan from lesson 19 with Dian distinguishes lightning from simple electricity. So if we want to warn someone to stay inside during a thunderstorm, we could say, 不要出门, 正在闪电. Don't go outside now, you could get hit by lightning. And, as in English, lightning can be used to describe an unusually quick and surprising action, such as a lightning raid, lightning war, or lightning attack. So, we have a similar Chinese example of someone suddenly leaving the country. The seventh character in today's lesson started out in Arcobone script as a simple sketch of a man performing his ablutions, purifying himself before presiding over a religious ritual. This ceremonial bathing, along with abstinence from food and drink, were necessary to demonstrate one's sincerity and reverence toward the gods. The ritual bath was replaced by rain, and the priest or wizard figure became completely distorted over time until he resembled another character altogether which is what we now see under the rain cloud. This character is pronounced first tone, xu, xu. Since this purifying bath was an obligation, xu means to require, to need, to be necessary, with the extended sense of 
to wait or hesitate, because the ceremony could not proceed without these preparations. The most common phrase using this character is xu yao, meaning to require, to need. Again, we see two characters with similar meanings appearing side by side to avoid ambiguity in speech. My next example is a simple question, asking, what does a person need after having left the security of home and begun living in the real world? The answer, money and friends that can be depended on. As the character Xu came to mean require or need, Chinese lacked a name for the priest performing these religious rituals, so a person radical was added to create the next character. Pronounced second tone. Zhu, Zhu, meaning wizard or sorcerer. This is a phonosemantic compound with xu serving both as phonetic and semantic elements. Officiating at these rituals, this priestly class obviously possessed special knowledge, which led to the character zhu being applied to scholars collectively, and specifically to Confucian scholars. Zhu jia is now the commonly accepted phrase referring to the Confucian school of thought. Remember we said in lesson 13 that jia can also serve as a sort of suffix, indicating a specialist, similar to IST in English, artist, scientist, or Confucianist. So what happened to our man undergoing a ritual cleansing? Over time, he apparently became confused with another character, meaning a beard or facial hair on the chin. Pronounced second tone, R, R. Here's a comparison of the primitive forms. Remember that the man with outstretched arms, Da, is the origin of sky and the heavens, Tian, that vast expanse above mankind. It's not hard to see how the two forms could be mixed up. According to scholars, the fact that a man's chin whiskers are a continuation of his cheek whiskers gives this little character are many uses. It emphasizes either similarity or contrast between two things, and is variously translated in English as in addition to, and then, and yet, not only, but, etc. Here are three examples. Ding xiao er shao. The measly cubes of meat are few and far between. Ta da shao da. Are buhao kan. His hands are big and ugly. I was just kidding around with him, that's all. Xiao xiao and yi xia both mean just a little bit, and the literal meaning of er yi is and stop. In other words, I was only teasing him, and I stopped before any harm was done. The next and last character is so easy to understand that I've included it in today's lesson. It's a pictogram of a beard and a woman. Pronounced third tone. Schwa, schwa. This character is likely a reference to Peking opera during the Qing dynasty, where all roles both male and female, used to be performed by men, since a woman appearing on stage was considered unseemly and detrimental to public morality. In other words, it simply refers to play acting, on stage or off. An extended meaning is to behave 
so as to impress others, usually in a pejorative sense. Notice the difference between the upper part of the characters yao and shua. Our final example is the phrase wan shua in this next sentence. Wang zi zai yu zhong wan shua. The prince is playing in the rain. Here is our color chart with today's ten characters. Yu, yun, shuang, dian, xue, bao, xu, zhu, shua, and er. So, what have we learned in today's lesson? 1. The outline of a cloud with four raindrops inside is the character for rain. Since all weather conditions are related to the atmosphere, Mandarin Chinese generally uses xia to fall as the verb. So, xia yu is the expression to rain. 2. The original pictogram for cloud was two horizontal lines, the primitive form for shang, above, plus a swirling cloud of vapor below. Later, the rain radical was added on top. 3. When the rain radical appears above the phonetic xiang, you have the character for frost, which also uses the verb to fall, xia shuang, to mean the ground is covered with frost. 4. When the temperature drops further still, it may snow, xiaxue, which is cleverly depicted as rain that can be swept with a broom. The bundles of straw attached to the broom handle no longer appear in the modern character, leaving only the hand from the phonetic, pronounced hui. A snowman is xue ren, and anything as white as snow is xue bai. Five. A cloud with hailstones below is the character for this weather phenomenon, pronounced bao. To avoid confusion, the character for ice, bing, is added to the full expression to hail, xia bing bao. The hailstones were replaced by the phonetic for a small bundle, bao. 6. Dian is the original character for both a boat of lightning and for God that mysterious, angry ruler in the sky. Later, a rain cloud was added to differentiate the two. The verb and noun for lightning is shandian, literally, to flicker or flash lightning. Shandian is also used to describe quick and surprising actions, just as English does in lightning raids or lightning attacks. 7. With the discovery of electricity, the character dian was logically borrowed to describe it, producing such terms as an electron, dian zi, a dry cell battery, dian shi, electrical appliances, jia dian, and video games, dian wan. 8. The character meaning to require, to need, is xu, an ideogram showing a priest undergoing ritual cleansing. Necessary preparation before a spiritual ceremony. The combination xu yao makes very clear the meaning of require or need, avoiding ambiguity among similar sounding characters. 9. Once xu was used to mean require or need, it was necessary to have a term for the priest himself. So the person radical was added to create zhu, meaning priest, wizard, or sorcerer. Since this priestly class had special knowledge, Zhu was later borrowed to mean any scholar, especially a Confucian scholar. Ru Jia now generally refers to the Confucian school of philosophy. 10. Centuries of recopying apparently caused confusion between the characters for sky, Tian, and beard, Er, leading to the misuse of beard in the composition of xu, 
to require. 11. The character R, meaning beard or facial hair on the chin, is quite useful in modern Chinese, supposedly borrowing the idea of extension of facial hair to mean a continuation of the previous thought, or a contrast with it. For this reason, now R is used to mean and, similarly, not only, but also, etc. For example, 椅子小 are 不好坐. The chairs are small and uncomfortable. 12. The pictogram of a beard and a woman, shua, means to play, put on airs, or behave in a way to impress others. A simple example is wan shua, meaning children playing and having fun. Now you will find a short quiz on double, triple, and longer expressions. Answer using only the characters learned so far. Thank you for watching and listening.